Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ronan Vico. In this video, we're going to learn step by step how to build a menu who slides like that. When we click it, the menu slides and open. When we click to close, the menu slides back and goes. So, hope you guys like it. Please consider to subscribe and click thumbs up if you like it and let's go. So, let's build this sliding menu. The first step here is to have a timer because in my idea what I'm going to do here is to insert a timer and with the timer we can set for example how much time I want to the menu to slide so let's understand the object timer the first thing that we need to set here is the duration of this timer I will set the value of 1000 because I want to wait 1000 milliseconds that is equal a second so my menu it's going to slide for just a second. The next, we have here the repeat, auto start and auto pause. We don't want to repeat or auto start. We want to, the user, when he clicks on a button, the menu opens. So we, we want to start this timer on a click of a button. So let's do it just for testing here. Uh, let's insert a button just to test it and insert here a variable. So let's call set open menu var open menu to true so when var open menu is true i want to start this timer right here the timer is going to be timer of my menu slide what i'm going to do next is to go directly here on the start so take a look here start is false so to start a timer i need to set a variable to false then true when i set to false then true the timer is going to restart so what i'm going to do here is to set the value open menu now in this button that is the button that is going to start the timer i will insert the following statement i will set var open menu to false and then to true that is going to make the timer to restart. When I click this button, we can see here, the timers go from zero to the duration, that is one second. If I click again, from zero to one, zero to one. So it is working exactly like we want. Next step here is to use that value of this timer right here. So timer of my menu slide, that is the name of this object dot value so take a look here we have a value that's go from zero to one thousand that is the duration so you can see here what what i'm trying to do i'm trying to use the value of the timer that that goes from zero to one thousand and i have the one thousand that is the duration of my timer so now for example just to make make it more clear for you if I insert here a rectangle and the X of this rectangle goes like timer of my menu slide dot value. When I click here on this button, take a look. Did you get it? What I'm trying to do here? I will use the value of this timer and the duration of this timer to move an object while the timer is running. So next step here is to create your menu. You can create it like you want. I will delete this rectangle and insert a, a container, right? A container. In this container, I will insert here some buttons just to make it uh, more beautiful, okay? So I will rename it to container menu slide. And I will insert here some icons and text, so I can uh and some text now i have two buttons on my menu and i will fill with a color to make it more beauty so let's insert a color here i want to slide that menu using my value of my timer and also the duration of my timer so how to do it the first thing before that i will insert a close button here to close that menu when click so on select set var open menu false 
and the visible of this menu, I will set the visible of the container to var open menu. So when I click it, it's, it is going to hide, okay? And to open that menu, I want to have a hamburger menu right here. And when I click it, the menu slides. So when I click on this button, I want to, re to restart the timer, like this button right here that we, we did before. So I'm going to copy that and paste here. Now, when I click, I want to my menu to slide, but it is not working yet. I need to use my timer value and the duration of my timer to build the position X of my menu. Exactly like we did before with the rectangle. So how to do it? Instead of using the value and the duration, I want to get the percentage of the value from the duration. So I want to divide the value of the timer by the timer duration. So I will have a number that goes from zero to 100%. So I will have exactly a slide from zero to 100%. Take a look here when I click on uh, this button. Zero to 100, right? From zero to one. Now that I have this zero to 100, I can multiply this percentage from a value going from nowhere here to the position zero. So I, I need to move exactly my width, width from my menu. Did you understand? Let, let me try to draw it here. I have this X position that is zero right now. So I want to move my menu to the zero position, right? My X, my X equals zero. And I want to move from exactly this width, my width here is 305. So I want to move 305 from less 305 to zero. Less 305 to zero. So I want to move from zero to 100 percent, 305. Maybe it is hard to understand. I'm just moving from this position to this position on my X property. So take a look. My width is 305. My X is zero. So I, I, I'm trying to move from last 305 right here to zero. So how to do it? I will multiply this percentage that goes from zero to 100. My container menu slide dot width but if i play here it is going from 0 to 305 and i don't want to go from 0 to 305 right i want to go to less 305 to 0 let's make it more clear if i insert here my x this exactly value take a look what what's going to happens here when i click this button he's moving from 0 to 305 i don't want that i want to move from 305 to zero. So how to do it? I will subtract my container menu slide. Let, let's insert here on the text label first so you can see the, the value. I want to container menu slide with less less is because I will go from 305 to zero. Are you seeing here the value going from 305 to zero? So now I have the exactly formula that I need to insert here on my container menu slide position X. It is almost ready, but it is not ready yet. Did you remember that I said I want to go from the negative 305 to zero, the negative width to zero. So when I click here and it's not going from negative 305 to zero is going from 305 to zero. So if I use this formula here, exactly as my X in my container, take a look. It is going from right to left, but it is not going from left to right that what we want. 
So how to change it? We are going to multiply this value, all the value, all the formula, to less one. This way, we're going to have from the negative with the negative x position to zero. Now, we have the exactly formula that we want to use as our x position of the menu. Whew. We did it, guys. When I click here, our menu slide, if I click here, the menu goes. Can we slide the menu back instead of just closing like that? Yeah, we can. So let's, let's do it. Why not, right? So the first thing here is to, in this icon right here, the icon the, who close, I will change. Instead of using the set var open menu, I'm going to set a new variable called closing, closing, my menu false if closing my menu is true then i will know that i am closing the menu in the hamburger the button that opens the menu i will set i will set the following variable set closing my menu false so if is false i will know that i am open the menu so with this variable i can know if i i need to move from negative with to zero right so i will know that i need to move from less with to zero or i will move from zero to less with did you get here? I will use this variable closing my menu to know if I go from which number to which number. If I go from less with the negative width to zero or the zero to negative width, right? In my X position, in my X position, I will use exactly that. If closing my menu, I will do one thing. If I am open, so uh, here I, I am open the menu. I am going from less width to zero. In, in this case, going from less 305 to zero. And here I am closing the menu. I am going from zero to less width. In this case, I'm going from 0 to last 305. Did you get it? So how to change how to change that to hide the menu? Going back here on this text label, I will copy that and paste. And what I want to do here is to go from 0 to 305. So now I will multiply, I will multiply, take a look here, I will multiply the value divided by duration by the container menu slide width. Take a look here, it's going from 0 to 305, right? Take a look, 0 to 305. Did you remember what I, I wrote? I said, I am going from zero to negative width. So it's exactly that. Exactly that. I want to go from zero to 305. But, but I need to multiply that for a negative number. So multiply that negative one. Now take a look here. Zero to less 305 to negative 305. It's ready now. I can copy that. Go here and change all of that for my value. Oops, let me see here. I, I forgot something. Oh, okay. Now it is perfect. So now when I click on the hamburger menu, the menu opens. And when I click the X button, he is hiding because of the visible property that I need to change here. Visible. Var open menu, let's 
let's insert true here. And also, when I click this button, I need to restart. I need to restart the timer. So I need to set var open menu false. Set var open menu true. I need to restart the timer because we are using the timer to move. Okay, we are using the timer to move. So I'm setting close my menu true and restarting the timer. It could be a UDF, right? We can make a new DF for that. Our menu is ready. When I click here on the X, he slides back. When I click here, his he slides and show the menu. So we can, of course, do it more beauty and insert some UI here and UX and icons and buttons, but you need to understand how to do the slide and that's what I, I try to do here in this video to show you, to teach you how to create your own menu slide. So this hamburger menu should be backward, reorder, bring, send to backward, so the menu shows the menus goes and now we have the slide menu, okay? The restart, just to end this video, this restart timer could be a new DF. It's more easier, right? So go to formulas, call restart menu void and now we can insert like that using the experimental feature. If you don't know, we made a video about that. We have this new feature here on the UDF that can cause action functions. So restart menu is more easier, right? So restart menu. And also, and also on the hamburger here, we will insert this UDF instead of setting values. So restart menu, pretty cool, right? So now, our hamburger opens the menu, the button X close the menu. Also, we can build a component for that and goes further. But I will end this video right here. And if you like this video, please consider to subscribe to this channel, share this video. And if you watch the video to the end and you are right here right now, comment down below the word Pineapple, comment pineapple that I, I will know that you watched the video to the end. It's my magic word that I will leave on the video so I will know who likes the video, watch it to the end. So thank you so much for being here. Please click on thumbs up and help me share. And I would love your feedback, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. We see you in another video, in another class. And please subscribe.